And we're on. Dr. Jenna Scare, thanks for being on Fitness and Consciousness. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So I found you on Instagram and <clears throat> you're doing a lot of um, a lot of different kinds of movements. Some of it's like yoga stuff and handstands and kettlebells and you're also a physical therapist. So I guess let's start at the at the beginning. Like, what got you into the movement practices and your strength and conditioning movements to to begin with? Um, I think I guess I've always been a mover. Uh, back in since I can remember, we had to be in a sport <laughs> growing up. So gymnastics is the one I happen to stumble upon. So I knew a lot about body weight movement because that's what gymnastics is. And once I quit, I found Pilates because it really resonated with me in that sense. It felt like gymnastics conditioning by doing Pilates. So mm -hmm. I loved that and I really got into that. And then in grad school, I got into weightlifting with um, some of my friends. So every lunch break, we would go to the gym and do some kind of workout. So I got more proficient in my weightlifting. And then through the years, I've just met so many different people. So I have helped with yoga and kind of taught yoga. I taught Pilates. Um, I've met friends in animal flow. I've met friends in kettlebells. I've met all these different humans and individuals and movers. I got into the calisthenic community and competed with that. I did acro yoga. So I just love to move and I'm open. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many cool things happening now. It's like it's a it's a really good time, I think, to be um, in the business and or, or just a practitioner of these different strength and movement flows because there's mm -hmm. it seems like there's something kind of like new and and different coming out all the time. Somehow it's it's like there's this never-ending uh, possibilities. So as like a as a physical therapist when you're when you're looking at these different um like movement systems are you um are you, like what do you like gravitate towards more I mean you just named a, a lot of things that you were into from the gymnastics to the Pilates and all but like with the education that you have do you see like um how to like, kind of like optimize all these different things to avoid injuries or to uh, get the, I guess, the best results out of what you want while avoiding injuries or how, how is it that you're going about what you're, you're learning? Well, I, what I bring in person as a physical therapist is much different than what I can bring online. And so I use my expertise to kind of give people the foundational layer, which is mobility. Because if you don't have, or you, if you're limited within your mobility, you're most likely going to be going out and lifting heavy and doing all these exercises without having your foundation set. So, and, and also I, I focus in on mobility so much because it is a way that people can kind of assess themselves like, oh, I don't have good shoulder internal rotation. How can I work on that? So it's a way for people to start to understand their own body and an easy tool to be able to give people to work on their own body. It doesn't have to be so complicated. I know some people are like, well, I want the really cool mobility flow. And I'm like, it looks cool. It probably feels good, but is it pertinent for your particular body? Which is why I break it down exercise by exercise because it really should be individualized and it should be pertinent to what exactly your body needs, not just everybody because we're all unique, different beings. So when we're able to d dive into our own individual restrictions, that's where things really become powerful and really start to open up so that we can prevent injury, so that we can go into all these different kinds of movement patterns. There are so many movement patterns that I'm obsessed with and I love, and I try so many, and I feel like I have a good baseline because I have that mobility foundation. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So you're a, I see you offer um, a couple online programs. And so you're like, I was just reading through uh, some of it a, a little bit ago. And 
like you get like 12 new like workouts per month so or is it like going in are you you teach like a, like in progressions of like you start off with these mobility drills and these like movement flows <clears throat> and then it leads into like the more and more complicated ones or how does it how does it work so it really is dependent on each person um so I have two different programs. The mobility method is the one where it really becomes individualized for each person. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access of all these tools, which is really powerful because you get a full screening assessment. So you get to see exactly where your limitations are within your body. And then you have breakdowns of every mobility exercise you can think of for the body. And I really go over a detailed way of how to do the exercise correctly, how you can progress or modify it, and how long you should be holding for each kind of stretch or how long you should activate after each stretch. So it really gets into the body as a whole for mobility. But the purpose for that one is for people to go into the assessment and then be able to find the exercises that work for their individual body. Um, for the optimal body, that's where I have just a toolbox that anyone can pull from when they don't have to think. So you don't have to do the assessment. You don't have to do, you know, anything else. You can just pick from exercises and create your own. Um, so I have four functional HIIT workouts every month, and they range from a pretty easy one to a much harder <laughs> HIIT workout. And then I have four core stability workouts each month, which again, range from level one to progressing to level four. Four, and then four mobility flows that target different parts of the body. So the upper body, the lower body, the full body, and the spine. And when I'm going through all those different flows, it's really just a generalized mobility program so that people can kind of get an idea and at least start moving into something. But what I usually guide people toward is the mobility method. I think everyone should have this in their hands so that they at least can find where their restrictions are and learn the tools to get out of those restrictions. Yeah, what... What do you find that's like, uh, I know everybody's different. I, I started as a trainer a, a long time ago, so we run into different things, but we see kind of like recurring themes, I guess. So like, what do you see that like, uh, I, I guess holds people back from um, like some of the, the, the flows and stuff, like just like as, as far as getting started with them, like you think like a lot of people just think that they, um, like, cause what I get in, what I, what I hear sometimes is like, like people almost like want to get in shape before they come to me or something like that. They have like a, I've, I've heard that kind of thing. It's like, or like before they take my like martial art class, or like, oh, I need to get in shape first. I'm like, I don't understand why that makes sense to you. But I like said, do you have like, are there like these re recurring things that you see that like seem to be like holding people back from just getting started? Yeah, I think we have a lot of limiting beliefs that people put on themselves um, and judging themselves versus other people. We're, we're in the social media world, so it's all about comparison. Well, I don't look like that person. I don't move like that person. I can't do that yet. And we put all these negative thoughts on ourselves when really it's just about movement and there's no judgment when it comes to movement because everybody gets to start at a different level. And so no matter where you're at, there's always an opportunity to learn. And no matter who you are, there's still always an opportunity to learn. And, you know, luckily for me, I don't, ha I don't run across that as much because being a physical therapist, I see all body types. So it could be someone who's not moving to someone who is extremely active and an athlete. But at the same time, to buy my program, people still do ask, can I be a beginner? Or what if I already, you know, am an athlete, would this still be good for me. And I'm like, yes, if you're a human, it's good for you, you know, and just like stepping into any kind of workout process. If you're human, movement is good. I mean, obviously you want to progress effectively for your body where your body's at and you want to be listening to what could be going on. Maybe you're progressing something too fast. Maybe you rushed into this high level class that you weren't quite ready, ready for, which is totally okay. That's okay to start to listen and be like, oh, maybe not yet, but 
I can take this other class, you know, this class that is a little bit more beginner. And also there's, there shouldn't be ego. It's not about who's better than who, unless you're in a competition. If you're in a, like a real life competition, sure. Mm -hmm. But other than that, there's no ego. It's just movement. And just the fact that you're getting out there and moving, who can judge that? You're, you're getting out there and you're doing something. So no matter what your size is, no matter what your athleticism is, no matter what your coordination is, just move because it's literally been studied that the number one thing to increase longevity is through movement. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool to hear. I don't know that I've heard it quite like that, that the number one thing for longevity is the movement. Um, something that keeps coming up for me is, uh, like people's traumas of all sorts from abuse to like an injury, I fell on my shoulder or, and it, these create like, a, um, like maybe like the mental traumas or would cause like a, a physical inhibition of some sort. And then like maybe the, the physical one causes like some sort of mental one. Um, do you like, get into that like, like part of it i like, do, do you see that it seems to be like a this thing that like keeps just popping into into my world and maybe I'm, i've been searching it out more like looking for these different answers of like how to help people i mean i'm not a clinician to um mm -hmm. do that but I, I can see how just like strength and movement can help but do you do you dig into like the, the i mean obviously physical therapy it's you know there's been some sort of injury a lot of times but can you just like speak on that i don't know if i have like an exact question for you but can you just speak about that for a minute yeah so i think you're talking more on like how the emotions and how the emotional stress that we put on ourselves and coming from our body can even create pain within the body which yeah. is studied it's proven it's it's a real thing which is why I, also, I don't work in a typical clinic anymore. Mm -hmm. I treat clients one on one, and which allows me to spend more time on them and allows me to get really personal and really deep with them pretty quickly. And what that has opened up for me is is the ability to create space for clients. So almost once a week, I have someone crying on my table. And it's not because of pain that I'm inflicting on them. It's really because I'm opening the space to allow them to feel vulnerable enough to release those emotions. And it's not like I'm trying to be a mental health um, mental care, you know, specialist or anything. I'm not being a psychiatrist in terms of evoking questions or evoking emotions. I'm literally just opening and creating a safe space. Because I think especially when it comes to pain, the one thing that we do is we beat ourselves up. Well, why do I have this pain? I shouldn't have this pain. This is bad. And you start putting it and it's like a heavy weight. And instead of appreciating like, oh, I feel this pain. Where could this be coming from? What could this mean? We beat ourselves up. So it puts a heavier weight on you and then a heavier weight. And all of a sudden you're just like compressed and, and, and tied up in your body. So by us like putting all of that on you, it really, it, it leads to chronic pain a lot of the time, more stress in the body, more pain in the body, and it really doesn't help to relieve anything. So the one thing that I'm working on with people, the first thing that I'm working on when it comes to pain is, do you have compassion for yourself? Are you able to say like this, this pain, it's okay. It's normal. It's actually a good thing to be able to feel pain. There's people who don't feel pain. Like when you get diabetes and you get neuropathy, you stop feeling your feet. You stop, you start stepping on things and you can't feel it. Eventually your foot gets chopped off a lot of the times. So pain is actually a super powerful tool within our body that we need. And, and it's not something to fear. It's something to be aware of. And it's a really powerful tool. So allowing people to feel like, okay, it's okay. I'm not bad. This isn't bad. And then we get into breath work, which also helps tap into the parasympathetic system to tell your body to rest and relax. And a lot of times when you're in pain, you're locked up within your body and you're not yet releasing. No matter how long you roll on a foam roller, no matter how many massages you do, you're still locked up in your body because you're holding on to that tension of why do I have pain? And so when I get people to finally tap into that compassion for themselves and allow them to say it's okay and allow them to get back into their breath in a really effective manner of really being able to rest and relax and release 
all of a sudden tears start flowing. And I have people are like, I don't know why I'm crying. And I'm like, I do. You haven't allowed yourself to even step into this, to even be here. So when I, when we allow that space to happen, then sometimes we do start opening up. Okay. What else is happening? Are you going through a stressful time? Are you going through a divorce? Is something else, you know, weighing on you that you're feeling like you're taking on so many things and you're not allowing your body to just be. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. Um, I just finished listening to, I think I've uh, either read it or listened to it before on the audiobook, uh, The Body Keeps the Score. And it's about like, you know, how the trauma is getting, getting stored in different ways. And sometimes we don't remember traumas until we're, mm -hmm. you know, later on, like these memories pop back up, but we like hang on to them and cause us real um, stresses from all, all sorts of different ways. So that's, yeah. um, I guess maybe there were like some people that were aware of this for a long time, but it seems to be like something that's like gaining more and more, uh, like mainstream, like Western science, uh, kind of, uh, uh validation that yeah. yes, you do, uh, store things this way and there are ways to release it. It's not just take these drugs and come back when you're out and we'll give you some more. And, uh, right. So when you're, um, when you're working with somebody that has that happen and do you, and they're having like these emotional releases when you're working on them, then are you giving them like homework, like movement homework that's, designed to kind of release more or, or what do you do? Totally. Um, I think it, it works in multiple ways. So it's always dependent on the person. There's no one size fits all. Um, but definitely breath work is one of the number one things that I allow people to go home with. And, and it's a really powerful tool, especially when people feel that pain again. When they're able to tap into their breath, they're able to release that that moment of pain because it unlocks and it literally releases in the nervous system. And so when I give people that tool and that ability to find that within their body, it really is amazing what can open up and what can come of that. So that's always the take home tool. That's the primary one is really getting into that breath work. And I tell people, can you at least give me five minutes before you go to bed at night? And then once you get used to that, start doing it when you're driving, start doing it when you're walking, start doing it when you're at work, you know, and we start tapping into this breath and remembering it on a daily basis. And it naturally will eventually start to become part of your life. Um, also, you know, the, of course, there's movements that I take home for every client. I use a lot of PRI type work, which is Postural Restoration Institute. Mm -hmm. And that also is just a different way to really get into that nervous system and, and help the nervous system to feel safe and in a better alignment so that you can increase your mobility, so that you can get muscles firing the way that they're supposed to be firing. So I think prior to heavy exercise, prior to, you know, corrective exercises even understanding and tapping into the nervous system is the most powerful tool that we can really have which is obviously harder for me to translate onto social media or online so a lot of the tools that i use to be able to relate to people online is mobility or strength or corrective exercises but if you really wanted to dive deeper and you were in chronic pain or acute pain i think going to see um someone who's going to tap into that body in that way it is very very powerful yeah um what kind of um breath work are you referring to really really basic um so it's really just allowing people to understand where the breath is coming from again so our diaphragm rests underneath our rib cage but most of the time when we're breathing, we're breathing up into our neck and up into our chest and using all these accessory muscles up by your neck to do most of the work. So if you, and what became very common is the hand over the chest, hand over the belly, which is not a great, not a fine, or what am I trying to say? It's not a bad place to start, but it also isn't getting the full picture, but it's a good way to just kind of assess real quick. So put one hand over your belly, one hand over your chest, 
and take a breath in from your nose. And if you feel like your chest is leading the way, your hand on your chest is doing all the work, then you know you got some work to do and you're probably staying locked up in that nervous system. And when we stay locked up in that sympathetic, it actually releases more cortisol and we're telling our body we're in this constant level of stress. And when we're doing that, it, it's increasing the sensitivity into your nerves. And your nerves is what fires back to your brain and says that you're in pain. So if our nerves are firing back to our brain to say that we're in pain at a constant state, we know that the breath has a really powerful tool to be able to get out of that. So then I say, okay, can you put two hands on your low rib cage belly area? Because it's not just about breathing into the belly. If the rib cage isn't moving, then we're not getting a very effective breath through, throughout that whole rib cage area still. So then that's when I say, okay, let's put our hands on the low rib cage belly area. I want you to feel as you breathe in that your rib cage and your belly is going to kind of expand as one. And as you breathe out, it's going to compress and relax as one. So getting people back into that regular breathing pattern, it can literally change things in an instant. So it's a very powerful tool. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing just like how we can, like some of these um, like a ancient things like yoga and like I know like some of the yoga stuff may not go back as far as it's it's claimed like the way it's practiced especially in like a lot of the studios here but um do you like when you like what got you uh, I mean you probably learn about breathing through like physical therapy school but like are you taking your like maybe like what you learned at at your like, did you go through like, yoga teacher training or you just did the classes? And like, what I was like, what I was saying is like, when you're, when you have somebody at your physical therapy practice, are you using anything that you like learned through yoga and not physical therapy or? Yeah. So a lot of things I've learned that I actually use with clients now is hardly anything I learned in PT school. Hmm. Physical therapy school is actually, it's a, it's a great way to receive your license so that you're legal <laughs> in yeah. what you do. And it's a great way to diagnose, you know, whether it's a musculoskeletal injury or is back pain possibly being referred from an organ or something else that we need to refer back to an MD. So that's why I think PT and chiropractors are so important acupuncturists as well. You know, when a personal trainer or someone or a massage therapist is diagnosing um, pain, you know, you don't usually, unless you've taken more courses, learned how to differentiate whether that's coming from truly a musculoskeletal problem or deeper into the system where it could be referred from an organ. So that's what PT school it really is great at, learning those differential diagnoses, learning those special tests to be able to say what is actually happening and being able to diagnose that. But when it comes to actually treating and actually healing a client, I think a lot of what I've learned came, came out of after PT school. I mean, yes, we learn about breath, but we learn about breath in terms of how to get lungs to function properly after they've been in surgery. So it's more talking about hospitalization and respiratory system, which is fine and it's great, but it also doesn't translate to the general population who's coming to see me who breath could actually be super effective. So a lot of that work I've just learned, um, I've taken many various courses. So some are related to PT, some are not. Um, so a lot of things I've learned from personal trainers. I've learned some things from yogis. I've learned, I'm open to learning. There's never anyone who can't teach you something. And I think no one should be so arrogant to think that they know it all or that they can't learn from someone who doesn't have all their, you know, as, as high of credentials as they do. Um, because you can always learn. And I have always continued that. I've surrounded myself around mentors and people who've taken me under their wings sometimes and just taught me different things. Um, so I've been very fortunate to continue to learn and I'm never done. I'm always going to continue to optimize my programs as I continue to learn more 
And I'm just always wanting to help people. And that comes with a constant hunger to want to know why and to want to understand the body in a deeper and a better sense. So it's always going to be a constant journey. Yeah, it is a fascinating thing about the, the human body that there's like there's people are still like doing new stuff, maybe like kind of like reinventing stuff, but like of it's just amazing that we can just keep innovating and moving in different ways and whether it's like dancing or different like adding on to yoga or, or whatever. But um yeah, you mentioned like the pain and the personal trainers, like to me that's where um, a definite thing that people like whether they're yoga teachers or personal trainers like once somebody has pain that means you no longer know what you're talking about and you need to refer them to someone else that does have medical training because pain can be a weird thing it's not always um, uh, like what you may think is rational or like what makes sense to you right. and, but there is like the like the like the, the yoga teacher may have like some of the more um less um like maybe they understand like the emotional physical stuff better than somebody with like the you know certain kinds of like medical degrees or um so they're like learning from oh okay this does um make sense like the emotional stuff and you, you mentioned like feelings uh uh, safe and like the, the nervous <clears throat> system and how we can like these movement patterns. So, uh, like, can I maybe like dig into that a little bit more? Like somebody who's um, maybe they like they don't like move so well, move so well because they're like more like nervous or like I or maybe it's like how can I word it? Like maybe like the old person. Um, maybe it's like they they walk with like these short steps because like they're more afraid of falling instead of like they have reduced mobility so they have reduced mobility because they're afraid of falling it, it mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense my question makes of sense. course of course so you know our body is is always wanting to keep us safe that's its number one thing and so if it doesn't feel safe it's not going to allow you to have the range of motion so it's the same reason why i can post a video and saying like you can touch your toes in five minutes <laughs> because if you don't feel safe within your body your body is not going to allow you to bend forward it's going to start bending you're going to start bending forward your body's going to be like we're falling and grab literally grab onto your your muscles and it's it's weird for people to think like that but it's I mean, your brain has nerves and nerves are what's going into and feeding the muscles. If, if they're feeding the muscles and telling the muscles to pull back and stop and restrict, it's going to happen. And so that's, that's often what can, you know, restrict mobility, which is why when people even go into my program, I say the first thing that you need to do is go into the breathing module, because unless you can tap into the breathing module correctly and get that body to relax and feel safe, though, that range of motion that you're trying to get is never going to carry over. And if you really want to carry over and gain more range of motion and gain that mobility and allow your, you have to allow your body to feel safe. It's the number one thing. I had a client, um, he came to me from New York where he had been um, getting treatment for three years on his back. And he, when he came to me, I said, okay, can you bend down and touch your toes? Just a general screening I was doing. And he was like shaking, trying to bend down and touch his toes. Okay. Okay. Lift your arms overhead. And his arms were like shaking, trying to lift them up. And, and they didn't even get up very high. And that is a clear sign that someone's nervous system is like, what is happening? And doesn't trust him to do anything. And all they kept doing at physical therapy when he was in, up in New York was tell him to go to Pilates because we all think core strengthening for, for back pain and, um, and your SI is out of alignment. So let me manipulate you real quick. So all they were doing was making him tighter and tighter and tighter. So once we actually got him to get into his body, now he is moving like a champ. And just like you said, having a team of people, now I've released him where I'm like, you don't need me. 
you need to go with a personal trainer that I trust and that will continue this journey of getting you into that nervous system and getting you moving better. I mean, his arms are fresh overhead now. He's touching his toes. Things are beautiful and opened up. And now I have a team where I'm like, hey, personal trainer, here's who you go to. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, and I thought you were going to say they were going to be like, like having him stretch. I thought that's what you were going to say, like having him like, oh, just like, just keep yanking on it and it'll, it'll, it'll get there. So like how much of that has, to, well, like what you were doing with him was like, like literally trying like, like static stretching stuff and how much of it was like just moving and like, what, what did the, your work with him look like? Oh man, it's gone across the board and I, and it would be different with every client, you know? Um, but I do use, um, particular massage techniques that run along fascial lines because when we talk into, you know, lines of the body working as a whole, it helps to feed back to the nervous system to also make you feel like, oh, elongated and, and, and safe and aware. And so I use those techniques to, which is more so along like myo-detox. So if anyone's heard of that, um, in yeah. order to tap into the body. But again, that's like a manipulation. That's like an adjustment and it's only going to last for a second. So you have to make sure that when you're using these techniques, you're following it up with movement. So allow your body to feel safe, allow it to go back into that, that, um, that position again because there's not going to be any carryover adjustments manipulations and massage techniques are all just neurological they only last for a moment and that's what people need to understand too because no one fixes you you fix yourself we're just facilitating the way so i use a lot of those techniques to start to facilitate into the body um, and then we worked on breath a whole lot um, we worked on relaxation drills we worked on movement patterns so doing a lot of um, movement and triplanar motions to get his body to open up in all these different areas um, and now he's doing weights and he's doing awesome yeah it's really cool how like these different things can can work together and just like somebody like like the feeling safe thing like a saying like this trauma stuff keeps um, people that have had various traumas keep just kind of popping into my life and I end up learning about it somehow <clears throat> and I've, you know reading stuff and just how it all works together and um, like how much, how much do you think maybe it's like a little bit beyond your scope but it sounds like you're already kind of on it like just like talking about it because um, I think the last book I was reading kind of uh, mentioned that so I like when somebody's like like working with you, so you're like doing your like physical stuff, and then like maybe they're like so I don't know why they're crying or something like that, and like then do they like open up and then like get after they start talking, then you see more physical improvements after they just have like be able to like let it out. Yeah, a lot of times it's releasing. And, you know, I was just talking to someone uh, the other day I did an Instagram live with and he, he uses certain techniques that elicit someone's reactions in terms of um, he tells them to like kneel in front of a bed and pound into the bed. And just this pounding action helps you to release um, some tension and some stress that you might be holding on to that you didn't even know about. Um, mm -hmm. He recommends screaming into a pillow and yelling into a pillow and just getting things out because oftentimes we hold it in so much and we're like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, or whatever, I'm just going to brush it off or F that or whatever it may be. However, we brush things off. We're not really, we, we're actually storing it within our body. So instead of just releasing it and letting it come to the surface, not by yelling at someone. <laughs> so yeah. yell into a pillow, do whatever you need to do, yell into your car, whatever it may be, but but some way that you can release and just get the energy out. Um, there's so many different techniques. There's so I don't think there's one way to do anything. I have friends that use what's called morning pages and they have to have three pages that they write in every single morning and then they throw it away. So then you never have to come back to it. You never come back to those feelings and you just release them. And it's like a morning practice. So it's a really, whatever tool that you can find that you use within your body to release. And if someone, if you need to cry, go out and cry. 
-hmm. You know, don't allow someone to tell you that you can't have emotions, that you can't cry, that they can't handle you crying. Okay, then go and step into the other room and cry because, or take a shower and cry. It's okay to have these emotions that store in our body. It's human and it's normal, but when we hold on to them a lot, that's when they start to manifest in different areas or they start to restrict or you know, you'll notice like even if you're doing yoga all the time, why am I feeling so tight? There's there's certain things that we're holding on in our emotional patterns that don't allow us to release. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Uh, I think it's getting more common or um, maybe part of it is like my age and the people that I <laughs> talk to. I'm I'm 39, but like a lot of like you know I've I've done martial arts for a long time and like a lot of the the toughest guys I know um, are they they'll talk about their their feelings they'll talk about love and stuff. I mean you got this guy who can beat everybody up real easy, super tough guy. And he's not afraid to talk about love. He's not afraid to talk about his feelings. He's not afraid to talk about how like a, a girl broke his heart or a problem that, and, and at first it's like, it can, it can almost be kind of confusing, but it seems like it can be, uh, it, maybe it's getting more acceptable now. Like as, as guys, like we're, um, we're supposed to be stoic and we're supposed to hold everything in, got family to take care of as, as a mom, it's not about you. It's about your kids. So your, your work, then you get home, you're making money for your kids. Then you get home and you're taking care of the kids and it's all about the kids. And then you don't have, um, you, you can't complain. And so a man can't complain. Woman can't complain, but there's mm -hmm. like all these, and then it comes out in all these weird ways, but it seems like now mm -hmm. it's different. And, um, like one of the guys I had on, um, Leo Savage, he's, uh, his last name is Urquidez, but he's uh, changing it. And he's big into using the mace. And he's using, doing like a lot of like uh, flowing drills with the, the, um, the mace. I don't know if you're familiar with him, mm -hmm. but he does a lot of uh, interesting things. And so he was on and he was talking about, um, I thought he was going to say like heart problems, but he was like saying problems of the heart, like this breakup. And so we had like these things going on. So, but by using the mace and, and all these different movement patterns, like it was able to like release that. So I was maybe uh, like these new movement patterns are allowing us to open up new uh, mental patterns or uh, psychological possibilities or something like that because you're moving in all these different ways it opens up these stored traumas that we didn't know about and so maybe they can be processed physically without even having to do the mental work or it's does that make any sense to you or like what do you think it, of it? does and i think it's it's going to be dependent on every person and it could be you know different times in your life where you're going to need where you're going to find releases in different ways. I think there's never a time where we release all our traumas. Some are going to hang on, but being able to be more aware of when patterns are coming on or when traumas are coming on or when traumas are presenting themselves, that's when it becomes really powerful to be able to learn the tools to kind of release in whatever way that means for your body. Um, I personally have done a lot of personal development work where I've gone to workshops where it is very interactive and experiential and having to do things that are physically releasing, which I think is so way more powerful than just sitting down and talking to a therapist. Not that that's not needed. I've done that as well and it's helpful. Um, I think everything has its time, but also when you can really dive in and do the work and do the experiences of whatever it may be for your body. So maybe it is a movement pattern. Maybe it is actually talking it through. Maybe it is yelling it out. You know, whatever it is for your body, I think we do get to learn where these are coming from or we become victim to our body all the time. So are you going to be a victim to whatever's happening and these pains that continue to happen? I have, I've met someone and he's been on and off neck pain for 10 years and he's just used to it. And I'm like, you're a victim to your pain. So are you going to be a victim to your pain or are you going to dive in and do the work? 
Yeah, and, and so that's that, where, you know, taking on the responsibility of being able to do that becomes so important and diving in. And I think personal development workshops are amazing and so, so needed. Yeah. So when you're, how, was he like receptive to this, uh, like new way of thinking about his neck pain that you were talking about or was he re resisting the, cause it can sound, I can see how, um, I mean, I've been kind of like reading about this stuff and practicing this stuff for a long time, but I can see how somebody like, especially if it's new to them, if they're like very like maybe Western mind for lack of a better, uh, word at the moment thing thing oh that's just like this woo it sounds like some yoga mm -hmm. teacher said that it's ridiculous there's no uh, was he receptive that it might be something yeah we didn't really get to dive into emotional stuff quite as much i think i he wasn't from in town so i worked on him once um i think if we would have if he's a consistent client, we would have definitely dove into a little bit more. Um, for him in particular, the one thing that I was going to start with was, um, yes, I got him into movements, but breathing, because he was really, really, really locked up. Like when someone, if I lift their arm and then I release and they don't just let it fall, <laughs> it's a good indication that you're holding on. Mm -hmm. um, if, when you can't just like let your body just flop and be. Um, and that happens with almost every client, almost every client. And I'm like, we got to work into this like releasing pattern. And with him, he doesn't meditate or anything like that. Because again, for a lot of people, that's going to be too woo-woo. So I, I ask him to just go into the breathing because the breathing is actually something that you can, for analytical minds that don't want to do all this like weird stuff, it's a really easy way to just be able to say, okay, I don't want you to meditate. I want you to breathe and only focus on your breath, which essentially is meditating, but we're not telling, we're not using that word anymore. <laughs> we're yeah. saying we're just focusing on your breath, put your hands on your low rib cage. Where are you breathing into? What can you feel? Do that for at least five minutes. And so over time, I am actually getting in them into that meditative state without having to go there, without having to say that. So I also sense, you know, where are people at? If, if they like meditating, maybe we'll go into that way. If they're not really up for that kind of thing, maybe we'll just go into the breath work. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if, if you have like, a, if you're just hoping your one method works with all your clients, you're going to run into some walls, I, I think. And yeah, well, I started as a trainer. I was uh, 20 years old, and so I'm, I was working with people that were usually like twice my age, a lot more financially successful because they could <laughs> afford me. And uh, and like some of them, I would have like meditate at the end, or do like maybe some like qigong type of things, and they'd be. But there's other ones I, I wouldn't even bring that up because you're. You know, mm -hmm meditating in a personal training yeah. studio where other people are doing like curls and stuff and yeah finding the right um uh, model to use for each one so um i guess like what's uh like what do you see on the on the horizon i know you have these um, online programs like what do you like see as next are there other areas that you're wanting to like dig into the look promising for whatever goals you have? You know, I really want to just continue to spread the message that no one else is fixing you. You fix yourself and empowering people to dive in and tune in to their bodies. So I'm moving more into speaking and getting on stages as much as possible, to be honest, because I just want to continue to spread that message and spread it to the world. Um, because we do have all the tools within our body. A foam roller isn't gonna help us. A tool isn't gonna help us. Um, there's no other tool besides what you have within yourself that literally will help you. People like me, people, physical therapists and chiropractors, we facilitate. So we can definitely take a, a bigger look at the picture and kind of get you neurologically back into your body. But if you're relying on someone week after week after week, mm -hmm. they're not fixing you. They're not helping you because there's, no, there's nothing that we can do that breaks up scar tissue and does all these other crazy things that might, might be out there and said. It's really what you can do for your own body and all it takes is tapping in a little bit every single day because it's more about the consistency aspect rather than the amount of time yeah um you were um 
talking about you mentioned uh, the fascia, the fascial lines, and and you mentioned uh, acupuncture, and like I, I kind of go back and forth because my mind, my thinking can get pretty much as esoteric as as it, it can possibly exist in the in the world. I can have some pretty like far out kinds of thinking and like believe almost anything. Uh, mm. but, like, w do you think there's like with the acupuncture? Um, I guess there's like a couple kinds now, like there's a couple different kinds, like one's more like based on like a Western system of, uh, I think it's just called modern acupuncture and it's based more like on um, like the nerves and not necessarily like meridians. Mm. Do you have um, an, an opinion on like how that works, like acupuncture, like whether it's really like meridians, like do you, believe in like that system or is it more like nerves and like does that relate to the uh, uh, fascial lines so i believe in both whatever works for whatever person i don't think there's one technique one thing that's going to help anyone and if one thing isn't if you're not feeling it within your body you're not feeling like this is actually helping and facilitating anything to then go to someone else um i think it i think there's also a power in movement so yes go get acupuncture and and have your energy moved and things because i believe in energy i believe in we you know that that's super powerful within the body so i do think that it plays a role and if acupuncture can help you know in whatever way to guide that and facilitate that that's amazing but also movement move after if you're going to go get a massage move after if you're going to go see a physical therapist or a chiropractor don't just get the adjustment don't just get an ultrasound make sure that they're giving you powerful movement tools as well to tap into your body so i mean movement is the key to everything and i think whatever can facilitate that process and get into different energy lines that's amazing um, I personally, I haven't even done acupuncture yet once, which is crazy to me. Um, but I, I've heard amazing things. And then for other people, I've heard it doesn't work for them. So I think, you know, to each their own. And there's no one way. There's no bad way. Yeah, I've had it done once. And I was like hoping for something that didn't happen, I guess. But because um, I can feel different things in my body, like the microcosmic orbit. I'm like familiar with like Dallas system stuff. I can actually feel that energy moving around but um let's see i'm i think i'm um oh you mentioned uh, the myo detox um i know we're we're getting close to about an hour here I, c I can let you go pretty soon i'm sure you're busy but you mentioned myo detox and i was if you could uh explain what you mean by that um, so my detox was created by my friends Vinny and Scott up in Canada. Vinny Rehab is a very popular uh, rehab page out there on the Instagram world. <laughs> so people might know him from there. Um, really, they, their system of, of doing manual work is really based on fascial lines and functionally using that into the body to tap into the nervous system. And then he uses different movement patterns that, that hit different triangular um, patterns and movements so that we, again, start to rebalance what's happening within our nervous system and get our body to kind of rebalance on its own. So his belief system is like, if you're tilted to the right, push into the right and into the left, like go to both ways. Because when we can start, when your body starts to feel both extremes, we start to find the balance in the middle naturally without forcing anything. Because a lot of times what is popular and what is out there, if you have rounded shoulders, do retraction and just pull it back. But all that that's doing is just forcing us into a position our body isn't used to being in. But instead, if we're able to bounce between two different directions, we're actually allowing the body for itself to find that balance and that and and kind of rebalance itself. So again, it's just a facilitation pattern. It's we're all just facilitating the body in order to be functioning at its best so that we can live longer and go into longevity. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna to have to look more um, into it. Um, I did see him. You mentioned him on your Instagram. Um, I think I am about out of questions. Where I could just keep like digging and, and digging and 
you have a lot of interesting knowledge and a lot of good experience, but I don't want to hold you up for forever here. Um, is there anything else you wanted to get into or any like last uh, thoughts for us? No, you know, I think if people just want to learn more, they can go to my Instagram, DocGenFit, and I have tons of videos on there. And that's where I provide my link is for with my bot is with my um, programs as well. So the mobility methods where you can really start to dive in and take a look at your own body, which is the most powerful thing you can do. So I really encourage people to dive into their bodies. Um, and then the optimal body is a way for you to be able to have multiple tools at your fingertips for $15, $15 a month. So it's pretty cheap. And, and I'm really a hackler on form. So I show videos and, and, and I verbalize everything because I'm like, it, I, I'm so big on form. <laughs> Fill it within your body. Yeah, it is really good. I, I looked at, at quite a bit of your um, stuff. And of course, I saw you before I invited you on, on the show. And then leading up to it, I was looking even more in your you have a lot of really cool things going on, like the handstand thing and the, um, all sorts of neat things. So, um, yeah, you. well, it was really nice uh, hearing um, more about you and I think there was, there was uh, a lot of good stuff in there. So I will uh, let you go and I will uh, talk to you for just a minute once we're done recording. So thanks for coming cool. on. Thank you.